Hello, welcome to the Monday, June 17th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Washington, D.C. And of course, I'm here at Sands Fire. So if you're here, uh, stop by, say hi. Have plenty of in its Storm Center stickers uh, sitting here. You'll also find a stack of them. Hopefully, there's still some left next to the display. The ISC TV, as we call it, in the lobby area. Also, of course, uh, day one on Monday evening, there will be our annual handler panel. So stop by at 7.15 in the evening. Apparently, there's some interesting WhatsApp phishing emails going around. These phishing emails do claim that the user's WhatsApp subscription is expiring and they need to renew it. Now, of course, WhatsApp really doesn't have a subscription and doesn't charge for its services, at least, I believe, since 2016. But, uh, well, apparently, there are enough people that don't necessarily realize this and then fall for these phishing emails. So far, I've seen only references to these phishing emails on German news sites, so not 100% sure if actually German users are being targeted in this particular attack. And while we're talking about phishing emails, uh, the other trick that apparently is being reduced these days is the claim that a particular email is encrypted. So the email is delivered with just a link. The user then has to click on the link according to the email in order to retrieve the decrypted version. And when they're clicking on their link, uh, the website is asking them for their email credentials, which of course in this context may not not appear all that suspicious to users. And I've actually seen some commercial encrypted messaging systems that more or less do just that. And what I'm always afraid of is that they're being abused to essentially train users to fall for these kind of phishing scams. These encrypted email systems typically just deliver a link to the user's inbox. The user has to click on the link to then be redirected to the encrypted messaging system. And that's where the user has to log in to retrieve the message. So please uh, stay away from these messaging systems that do require the user to click on links because it's all too easy to trick the user into clicking on the wrong link. And Dr. Webb came across various malicious Android applications that all sort of implement a pretty simple trick in order to get users' credentials or then commit additional fraud. Initially, the malicious application will redirect the user to a web page that looks uh, like a well-known brand or the like, and then trick the user into subscribing to notifications from that particular website site. Now, what they're using here are these web notifications that websites can ask you to sign up for, and then these notifications are used to push additional messages to the user. Now, in the simplest form, this could just be spam, but uh, since these messages kind of look like system messages, they also can then be used to trick the user, for example, to enter passwords and the like, because they do look like they're coming from the trusted Android phone, not necessarily from an untrusted website, where a user may be a little more suspicious. And a researcher did release a database with 600 million passwords and their pre-computed hash tables. The sources of the data is similar to the famous have I been pwned database. Of course, some of the have I been pwned releases are also included, but notably this database here does not include emails or usernames. It's just the password. So something that you probably would use more for brute forcing than for credentials stuffing. These 600 million passwords actually come from a larger 3 billion password list and are available as a torrent file. Password lists like this are a little bit different from sort of your classic rainbow table. Rainbow tables actually are a compressed database 
of password hashes and the compression really only works if you have sort of consecutive password hashes so you can really only do this if you for example want all eight character passwords and the like in this case these are passwords that are actually being used in the wild so they have various lengths so some of these passwords may way exceed the eight or nine characters that you typically find in rainbow tables well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and hope to see some of you tomorrow at the panel. Thanks and goodbye.